the overall sustainability goal for the campus is to um, become carbon neutral um, and to be energy independent. Um, it, it's a, the approach that we've taken has been really unique in the fact that we have tried to use resources that are um, local. So we have wind, we have solar, um, and we are currently have um, a biomass gasifier. So we're using corn cobbles, which are local to our campus. Challenge is to connect all of those assets, and this building in some ways has connected a lot of those assets. Our goal was to help students be able to live in a renewable, sustainable living environment. We've done a lot with our academic program and our lived, built environment um, around the campus with those goals, but we didn't have a chance until this project to really create a living experience that lets students uh, live in the sustainable way that this generation of college students really would like to live. And so we had a chance to think about what that would look like for college students and then also for visitors who would come to campus in the summertime. So we wanted to use finishes that you might be able to use in a home construction project that would be um, duplicatable there and also for college students to have a chance to have um, great natural daylighting in all of our spaces, um, have edible landscapes where we're growing some of the food that we'll be eating in the hall in the future. We have flow VOC finishes throughout the building and so wanted to have a really healthy living environment for students and also for them to know that it was really an energy efficient place for them to live as well. I, I'd say that the design uh, process just took a lot of iterations and a lot of questioning and then trying to back off from things that were pretty progressive to things that were towards the conventional and I think that's kind of a win-win though when you can get something that's uh, a progressive outcome using conventional means, then it's a win-win. And I, when you look at the building and live in the building, I'm not sure if, uh, if anyone would say this has a whole lot of bells and whistles on it, which I think sometimes when you think about what a green building looks like, uh, it looks like technology and it looks like uh, systems as opposed to a living environment and I think this feels like a living environment that happens to demonstrate sustainable goals and uh, metrics. So I think that some of the value that the SB 2030 process added to the entire project was uh, first and foremost uh, helping set a bar that we would be striving towards with this this new construction um, and helping us compare the, the, this bar to other buildings in the state and around the country. Uh, it also really helps that the SB 2030 process has been reviewed by business, uh, academia, and government. So it's nice to know that in Minnesota, everybody is working together in, in, on a really complex questions about how should we build for, in this case of the, the Green Prairie community, how should we build a building for the next hundred years and um, what things should we prioritize? And so I think where the SB 2030 process adds value is uh, in helping us to do that prioritization. But I think sometimes um, green sustainability programs are viewed as hurdles you have to get past and you just get over and you do the paperwork and it's over with. And, um, you know, yeah, there are steps along the way you just have to do. But uh, when you have a client like Morris that is pushing you beyond anything that you've been asked to do before, and the client is a complete buy-in on the overall goals of how close can we get to carbon neutrality? Um, what, this, what does this building mean for the students that are gonna live there as part of their educational experience? And that push you to try to keep finding the best solutions that can be done to achieve those goals, that's the most important thing.